now my pleasure to introduce one of America's cleverest and most perceptive humorists, Mort Saab. What's that blackboard for? Gene, I thought we'd have a little uh, illustrated discussion about politics tonight. Well, what do I know about politics? I'm an actor. <laughs> you don't know it, but that statement just won you the nomination as the next governor of California. <laughs> okay. Now, as you all know, uh, politics is supposed to be divided up into two groups, the left and the right. I'm going to show you how to use a chart tonight based on psychomet uh, psychometrics semantics and calculus so that you'll be able to classify anybody in the world politically. Now, I did all the math, so I'll show you how this works. They ain't play this game with your date on the way out of the theater. Uh, <laughs> we like to bring people together. Uh, now, the chart goes like this. It has two categories. Up here, we have the left wing. You can uh, shudder if you'd like. The left wing is made up of the Communist Party, which has a membership, I'm sorry to say, of 4,000, 3,000 of whom are FBI agents. <laughs> Over here, we have the right wing, which is made up of various people, uh, John Birch Society, capitalism, fascism, and finally, greed, if we can work it out. That's over here. Now, the question is, where is everybody? Because that's certainly not any of us. Most people are in the, <laughs> they're in the middle because uh, you lose your job if you stay here, and you have to go to too many meetings if you belong to this. <laughs> so most people are here, and most people are in the middle. They're middle-of-the-road people. Uh, in Europe, they're called social democrats in German elections. So we'll call them social democrats. And uh, now, in these groups, there are also people who are left of others and right of others. So we'll fractionate this, if we may, here. And uh, we got a lot of chalk, a lot of interest. Not much time, but that's all right. Here's the left wing, middle of the road of the left wing, and the right wing of the left wing. Got that? All right. <laughs> Over here we have the left wing social democrats, middle of the road, and the right wing of the social democrats. And of course, over here we have the right wing of the right wing, middle of the road, and the left wing, oddly enough, of the right wing. Now, this may confuse you. Most people, of course, are here. They got out of college and uh, they got worried. So they get married and they uh, move into the valley and they gain weight and the hair falls out and everything. And they have minority group members where they're maids and they talk to them while they're sweeping because they're guilty. <laughs> They watch David Susskind, and if you argue with him about politics, they say, uh, well, even the New York Times feels this way. And they uh, have a uh, Mustang, think it's a sports car. They're all in here, right? That's it. Uh, so those are those people. Now I'll show you how these people break down. Ho Chi Minh is a left-wing left-winger. Um, Fidel Castro, middle of the road, the left-wing. Sister works at CIA. <laughs> Loses points as a left-winger. Kosygin in Russia is a right-wing left-winger. Left-wing social democrats, we don't have any. Middle-of-the-road social democrats would be uh, Wayne Morse, Martin Luther King. Most Negro leaders are middle-of-the-road social democrats until they get their rights, then they become right-wing social democrats. <laughs> now, most everybody is a right-wing social democrat. That would be uh, Eisenhower, Romney, Rockefeller, Javits, uh, Kekel, former Governor Brown, and uh, Frank Sinatra, Kim Novak. <laughs> Jack Jones, goes on now, Huntley and Brinkley, they're here. Peter Jennings. Uh, <laughs> left wing of the right wing, uh, Arthur Goldberg would be here. And uh, he would be the middle of the road of the right wing uh, would be uh, the president, uh, Humphrey, and uh, Nixon. They all have the same position on the war. <laughs> and Marshall Key and some other people are here. Robert Kennedy started off working uh, for Senator McCarthy and was here. Then he became interested in civil rights, working for his brother, and he moved over here. Then he's over here most of the time until occasionally he'll make a speech and he moves over here. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> for the next year, Robert Kennedy has no real position. He's kind of in a holding pattern up here. So that's really his position. At this point, most of humanity turned away from royalty to systems of government that use politics to decide how we live. There were different types of politics, as I've demonstrated. Since the beginning of time, a small few wealthy ruled the majority poor and made them do all the work. Later, it shared its rule with religion. Conservative means to hold on to traditional values, a slowness or aversion to change. It comes from the word conserve, which means to hold on to and protect something. In this case, to protect these old ways of power or wealth. Politically, economically, it means to hold on to the tradition of keeping power in a small group of hands of wealthy. Throughout history, it was through royalty since 
The industrial age, it was to keep power and wealth in the hands of a new royalty of business owners. Socially, it is to keep traditional values regarding sexuality and gender inequality, typically through religion, and the shared rule by the church. Often these two work together, mostly because business took over religion that is, for the most part, hostile to wealth and poverty. Liberal comes from the word liberty, a word to describe freedom from aristocratic rule, whether through traditional rule or new industrial or capitalistic aristocratic rule. Socially, it has meant freedom from old traditional sexual, gender, and race values that suppressed freedom of sexual orientation, gender, and race. It was a freedom from religious rule that allowed the freedom of religion on a personal level, but sought to take away religion's power to suppress freedom of the individual, making personal decisions that don't affect others a matter of choice and not something enforced. Let's uh, not tell anyone about it, okay? Sure. <laughs> hey. Why didn't you tell me we're into this shit, man? We could have been hanging out months ago. Ha <laughs> no, 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 no. The, the uh, Food and Drug Administration are having us do a study to determine what, uh, if any, are the uh, medicinal purposes of uh, marijuana. Mm. Wow. Well, if you ever need a guinea pig, let me know, you know. My grandfather was in the Tuskegee experiments. Progressive is merely a term meaning to progress or to reform away from old traditional ways. By definition, it's not very different from liberal. To progress means to move away from the traditional ways of the rule of the minority, but also includes a scientific progress to move away from traditional, nature-destroying old ways of fossil fuels and to progress into a sustainable, clean energy future, for example. Liberal was originally used in the pre-industrial age as a term to refer to a political position that wanted liberty from aristocracy. And the industrial age arrived and we learned that wealth also created aristocracy through extreme wealth and inherited wealth. But those in opposition called themselves progressives. They believed that a civilized society was a planned one rather than a market-driven one. The political terms left and right were coined during the French Revolution, referring to the seating arrangement in the Estates General. Those who sat on the left generally opposed the monarchy and supported the creation of a republic and secularization, which means moving away from religious rule. While those on the right were supportive of the traditional institutions of the old regime and the merger of the monarchy, aristocracy, and religious rule. In a nutshell, right was and is an authoritarian-based society. Left is independence from authority. Then you had totalitarianism, which is the rule of the state, which normally consists of a few bureaucrats deciding everything for everyone else. It can be applied to many forms of political ideals, but the end results are the same. The majority have little say in their society, making them also authoritarian. You can have uh, totalitarian, it's traditionally been associated with communism, but it's also today being associated with corporatism, or the rule of oligarchy, and the business class. A belief in magic, an embrace of historical and personal destiny, a culture that communicates through image and spectacle is a totalitarian culture. We have created in the words of the great political philosopher Sheldon Woolen, a system of inverted totalitarianism. Inverted totalitarianism is different, he writes, from classical totalitarianism, it doesn't find its expression in a demagogue or a charismatic leader, but in the anonymity of the corporate state. In inverted totalitarianism, you have corporate systems that purport to pay loyalty and fealty to the Constitution and electoral politics and the language and iconography of American patriotism and nationalism, but have so corrupted the levers of power as to render the citizens impotent. What we have undergone is a coup d'etat in slow motion, and we have lost, and they have won. In inverted totalitarianism, economics trumps politics, which is different from classical totalitarianism where politics trumps economics. And with that inversion comes a different form of ruthlessness. The commodification of American culture 
the commodification of human beings whose worth is determined by the market, as well as the commodification of the natural world whose worth is determined by the market, means that each will be exploited by corporate power until exhaustion or collapse. There are also economic elements to society, capitalistic, communistic, socialistic, and hybrids. They can all be either democratic, authoritarian, or a mixture. In a pure sense, communism was simply an authoritarian free work environment where all workers decide how the business works. Democratic communism looks like your local food co-op. Totalitarian communism, like the Soviet Union and others, was one where the state decided how the business works in most cases. Capitalism, for the most part, ironically allows authoritarian business entities to exist even in a so-called democratic state, such as in America. No business is guaranteed to succeed, be it democratic or authoritarian one. When this happens, people lose their jobs, then their money, then their food to eat. Aside from a Star Trek post-economic society, the most popular solution to the instability of business has been the state or private institutions providing unemployment insurance. In some countries, this is paid by the state, which is paid by taxes, so it is paid by the citizens. In other countries, you have employer-paid unemployment insurance. To some degree, you can call one social democracy, and the other more capitalistic. But these are how the hybrids exist. Some measures are paid for collectively, some are paid for only privately.